Hi there, this is Pastor Ashola here and Doris Famelusi. And welcome to the YouTube channel of Rock Church, where you'll find engaging content that would uplift your spirit. And whilst you're here, remember, turn on your notification, leave a comment for us, subscribe to our channel, and share this broadcast if it's a blessing. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to say good evening, everyone, and welcome to Fresh Fire, the place where God ignites us once again, the place where we receive the baptism of the Spirit of God. Fresh Fire to go again. Press fire to be sustained again. And I want to welcome our online audience and assembly and community. God bless you. Thank you for joining us again. It is with great pleasure um, that we have you as part of our family. We call you our digital family. And very soon, by the grace of God, we trust and believe that we'll be seeing you face to face very soon in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Um, I'm sure some of us may know, perhaps all of us, but isn't it great to have Papa back? Hallelujah. Back on home soil, back in the United Kingdom. Pastor Ishola, he's isolating as per rules and guidance. That's the reason why he's not here at the moment, but we know that he's watching us online. Uh, good evening, sir, and we are absolutely delighted to have you back. We can't wait to see you again. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Can we open our Bibles to the book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 17? Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17. And media, if you would, I'm going to need a bit of your support tonight as we step through what, um, briefly what the Lord um, has for us. We thank God for the month of July, our month of reward. Hallelujah. Wow, you don't sound like it's your month of reward. It's only been day two. Are you exhausted already? Are you exhausted already? Wow, some are already bringing sheaves. Some are already booking slots on Sunday to share testimonies. Some are already booking slots. Amen. Come on. We cannot, cannot, cannot allow this to pass us by. It's been it's day two already, and God is already doing amazing things. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17 Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord began to give me this word um, a, a, few, a few weeks ago, and I, I began to understand on Wednesday, the 30th of June, why I started to reason and see these things. Um, and I just got so excited in my spirit. Um, the month of reward is a month that is coming to stay. Hallelujah. When I say it is coming to stay, even beyond the month of July, I strongly believe that God is going to awaken us to this system in particular and make us hungry and expectant to be rewarded of God. The Bible commands us. It says, Hebrews eleven six, the scripture that Pastor D gave us on Wednesday, he said, those that come to God must believe that he is. First requirement. And second requirement is that he is a rewarder. Amen. Of two requirements in coming to God, one of them is that you must believe that he rewards. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's nothing wrong in wanting to receive from God. It's a criteria. There's nothing wrong with that. 
of course, there has to be balance in everything that we do. And there is the part that we play in our giving, in our service, in our submission, in our obedience. But in two requirements in coming to God, one of them says you must believe that he is. The second one says that we must believe that he rewards. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. If that has to be one of the criteria to come before God, then there must be something about the reward system of God. Hallelujah. There must be something about the fact that God is more keen in rewarding us more than we anticipate or expect to be rewarded. Hallelujah. There must be something about it. What is it about God? What is it about the system and the way that he operates that he is more intent in blessing us so much more than we want to be blessed? As desperate as we are, as keen as we are to share, the, to share a testimony, I was telling my wife, I was like, wow, when was the last time I shared a testimony? I'm, 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 I'm so eager to come out. And it's not that God has not been doing things, but you know sometimes when you're just putting things together and you're just like, okay, the days are passing by, and it's like, Lord, I need, I need, I'm due a testimony right now. I'm due a testimony to share. And I was saying to my wife, it's almost like I've been looking at the days go past. I was like, I need to share a testimony soon. Hallelujah. And God gave me a testimony. Hallelujah. God gave me a testimony, and I can't wait to Sunday to share it because it's powerful. It's one of those testimonies that sit in between. It sits in between June, the month of the secret place, and July, the month of rewards. It just tabernacles there in between. I'm like, ah, do I ascribe this testimony to June, or do I describe it, ascribe it? One of those where the encounter happened in June, but the manifestation occurred in July, if you know what I mean. On the 1st of July, that's when the manifestation happened. Hallelujah. So it just tabernacles right there in between. So I'm going to ascribe it to June and July. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But God wants us to testify because the testimonies of God and the rewards of God are beyond us. And in this scripture, we're not going to finish it today. I'm just going to sort of just, uh, 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 just, you know, it's almost like every single one of my, I'm not finishing, you know, everything, part two, one, part two, part three, I don't know. But um, go, go and help us. But this, this, is just, this is more like an introduction. Hallelujah. It's an introduction. Am I? We can't get Zechariah 117? Oh, oh, there, okay, yes. Every time I look back, I don't see it. There it is. Thank you very much, media. All right. So, uh, uh, Zechariah 117. It said, cry yet, saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts. My city, through prosperity, shall yet be spread abroad. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo the prophet, at a time when the cities of Israel, the cities of Jerusalem, the cities of Judah, the cities of God were decimated, were lying at, in waste, were desolate, where when you looked around, it didn't look like anything good would come out of Israel ever again. It looked like the country of God, the nation of Israel had been plunged into desolo- desol- uh, de- uh, des- uh, desolation that will probably take them eternity to recover from. The walls had been destroyed. The temple had broken down. And they were taken captivity. It looked as if there was no hope whatsoever. But in the, a season... When God was about to initiate a turn around and restore and begin to bring comfort to his people, 
the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah. And he began to give him word after word after word. And he came to verse 17. And he began to explain to Zechariah that cry yet. I still want you to label these points. In other words, you have been saying this, but I still want you to continue saying it. Because my people need to understand the reason why I will be rewarding them in this season and beyond. People need to understand the purpose of why God brings reward, why God prospers his people. And this is the reason why in spite of all you see around you, in spite of what appears to be desolation and uh, 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 waste and uh, uh, you know, everything, you know, nothing around looks like it's working. Every, you know, all the limitation, all the impossibility by our own calculation, it looks like nothing will happen until the next 10 years, maybe the next 15, 20 years. But God is saying that the prosperity that I am bringing upon you is beyond you. So it is not subject to your calculation. It is not subject to the circumstances around you. Therefore, Zechariah, I want you to cry to my people and say that my cities, this is the system, the mechanism that I've put in place, that the cities of God expand, extend, shall be spread forth, shall uh, uh, increase in costs through prosperity. Hallelujah. This is how we grow. This is how we expand. This is how the glory of God gets to cover the earth like the waters cover the seas. This is how the knowledge of God extends. This is how the wisdom of God is made known unto many. It is through prosperity. Amen. He said, my cities through prosperity shall yet spread abroad. In other words, in spite of all of this desolation around, you must understand, Zechariah, and you must make the people understand that in spite of all of this, yet I will rebuild my cities. And not only will I rebuild them and restore them to their former glory, they will extend beyond their current coastlines. There will be growth. There will be expansion. And the mechanism through, the, with, uh, through which this will happen is through prosperity. So tell my people, I am about to prosper them. He said, tell my people, I am about to bring prosperity to them. He said, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. I will talk about those two uh, 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 bits at another time. But today, I want to focus on that word prosperity. That's what I want to talk about today. I wrote something down and I said prosperity is a system that facilitates expansion, extension. Extending knowledge of the person that is prospering and the wisdom that powers their prosperity. You see, there are, the word or the topic of prosperity has divided opinion in the body of Christ for many, many years. The topic of prosperity has brought a lot of heated debates. It has brought a lot of criticism to many. It has really, really caused a lot of pain, let's admit, in the body of Christ. There is a sect of people that love prosperity and the gospel of it and the teaching of it. And there is also a sect of people that do not. And through this scripture or through this teaching, my, the intention of God is to make us understand that a system of prosperity once understood will completely put an end to that debate and that division once and for all. Hallelujah. The moment the ch children of God begin to come to a place of understanding 
that the purpose through the purpose of prosperity is beyond you and I and has an eternal kingdom agenda in our lives and in this world that we live in, the earlier and the quicker we come to that understanding, then the quicker we'll be able to dissolve the debates once and for all. And this is on this basis and on the strength of this understanding, will the church be able to stand and declare publicly and with conviction, I love prosperity. Hallelujah. And I want to prosper. And I pursue it with everything within me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just, we're, we're stepping into this slowly, 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 slowly. But I'm very confident that God will speak to our hearts. Amen. Amen. So he says, through prosperity, my cities will yet be spread abroad. So if I... Let us, let us, let us consider, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, let me use some examples of um, some of um, some well-known celebrities, you know, that we've known over the years. Let me use an example of, I could use anybody, but let me just use Michael Jackson for an example. We all know Michael Jackson, or at least if you're a certain age, you know, you will know who Michael Jackson is. A very successful musician, singer, songwriter, a very prosperous one. Now, there was a time in his life, Michael Jackson we're talking about now, there was a time in his life that nobody knew about him. True or false? True or false? There was a time in his life where nobody knew a thing about him. But then there came a season in his life where he entered into something that began to expose certain features and talents and gifts that he had. All of a sudden, people began to notice and focus on the gift and the talent and the musical abilities, his voice. And then all of a sudden, he began to what? He began to prosper. He began to what? He began to prosper. All of a sudden, he began to draw attention People began to see how wonderful he was. People began to see that this was a singer and a musician like many, many, like, like no other. You know, he was almost like in a class of his own. All of a sudden, his voice began to make him prosper. He began to prosper. He began to prosper. He began to prosper. And the more he prospered, what happened? All of a sudden, his coast was what? Expanded, was extended. All of a sudden, people began to know of him. People began to know about him. People began to what? Follow him. People began to what? Like him. People began to what? Pursue after him. Buy his records. Buy, that's what we used to call it back then, you know, back in those days, records. Buy his records, you know, buy his CDs, his tapes, and all of that. You know, if iTunes and all of that was available, I would be saying people began to download his, uh, his music online. And all of that, and all of that began to, he began to, you know, he, he gathered an international following in the hundreds of millions. So people began to do what? People began to follow after him and know of him. And then people began to what? People began to discover the wisdom through which he became prosperous. And many that began to follow his story and understand the wisdom behind his prosperity, a lot of them began to do what? Began to follow after his footsteps. Then you begin to say that he became a mentor unto many. Many people began to follow after Michael Jackson. They wanted to be like Michael Jackson. They wanted to sing like Michael Jackson. They wanted to follow the route and the path that he followed to stardom and to greatness. And then all of a sudden, we are left with a worldwide phenomenon with all of these followers. That is the power of prosperity. Taking someone from obscurity, 
not known. No one, absol- no, no one knows him. No one, you know, his coast is one little place here. But now before Michael Jackson died, his coast, well, he had a global coast. Hallelujah. That's exactly what prosperity does. But what I am saying this evening is that prosperity is a tool that, is, that belongs to God. It is a mechanism that God created. But of course, those that are in the world are using it and are benefiting from it. But it was created by God. And through the system of prosperity, when we prosper, the same pattern that we see there is exactly what will happen to us. But to the, to the glory of God. Why? Because this is how God gets to expand his course and his knowledge and the wisdom behind the prosperity that he gives us. When that begins to happen, this is when we begin to gain ground in the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is how we gain ground. Not just spiritual now, but physical ground. It is through the mechanism of prosperity. We talk about Jeff Bezos. Huh? the CEO of Amazon. Everybody, the moment Jeff, you know, be, you know, became a global phenomenon some years ago, all of a sudden Amazon began to catch all the, the headlines. All of a sudden everyone is searching Google. Who's this guy? Who's this Jeff? Who's this Jeff? You know, what's his, what's his, what's his, what's his principles? What's his secrets? You know, how all of a sudden he has this international following. All of a sudden, everyone's talking about Jeff Bezos. All of a sudden, everybody wants to know about his humble beginnings. And when people begin to know about it, people begin to apply it in their lives. Why? Because that is it. When they see a system that works, everybody wants to what? Tag along and follow after it. That's why I said prosperity is a system of expansion that exposes a people to an understanding, to the understanding of the person and the wisdom that powers their prosperity. Warren Buffet, exactly the same thing. He is out there writing books, making millions of books. Why? And people are buying them because people want to understand the systems of his prosperity. But this is a system that was created by God and created for his people so that when we apply it, through what? Prosperity. His cities, the likes of you and I, will what? Spread abroad. And the reason why that happens is so that people can know of us and understand the wisdom behind our prosperity. This is how we draw people into the kingdom. So even though through prosperity you can get yourself a nice five-bedroom house, And that's nice, but it's beyond that. Hallelujah. Even though through prosperity, you can afford to go to Dubai and spend seven nights. That's great. And that's amazing. And I like it. And we all like it. But the point of this prophecy is that, my children, I will prosper you, but it's beyond you. So while you will partake of it, and of course you will enjoy it, the purpose of why God prospers us is to cause his cities to expand. And by the expansion of his cities, his knowledge expands. His wisdom expands. The Bible says that Job was the greatest man in the east. That was his coastline. It meant that everybody within that place would have known of Job. They would have researched Job. They would have researched the kind of man he is. And I tell you what, there will be many, many people that would have done what? Followed him. And followed his principles simply because he was a man that prospered. That's what prosperity does. It has the ability to attract people. It has the ability to draw people in. When the Bible says in the book of Micah chapter 4 that in the last days, the mountain of God shall be established above all the mountains of the earth and people shall flow into it. What do we think that scripture was talking about? It was repeated in Isaiah chapter 2 as well. What are the prophets saying? A time will come when the horns, oof, Jesus, Allah yinka la pandas, 
Zechariah 18, where we continue there, the Bible, he saw a vision. He saw four horns. Calibra Naka. He saw a vision. He said, what do you see? He said, I see four horns. And God made him understand that the... I'm, I'm digressing. I'm digressing. Let's not go into that. Let's not go into that. That's for another time. That's for another time. He said, David said, he said, um, um, he said, my head will be exalted like the horn of the unicorn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are horns. Let me just go into it a little bit. There are horns that are positioned. During that time when Israel was, you know, being destroyed and being overtaken by Nebuchadnezzar and all of that, that was all go what was going on in the physical. But do you know what was going on in the spir spiritual? There were four horns that were positioned. And as long as those four horns were exalted, these were the horns of darkness. These were the horns that were positioned by darkness. So as long as those horns are exalted, it is impossible for anybody in that region to prosper. That was the reason why Nebuchadnezzar was able to come in and completely decimate and destroy Israel. Hallelujah. No one could prosper. No one could rise. No one, it would be utter desolation. Why? Because the horns of the kingdom of darkness were being exalted at, in a place where it was the children of Israel's horns that were meant to be exalted. But thank God for his word. He said, my horn shall be exalted. He said, at that time, when God was about to bring a, a, a restoration, the Bible says that God said, he said, what else do you see? He said, I see four carpenters. Another one said, I see four blacksmiths. You know what their job is? To cut off. To, to cut off, thank you, man, to fray, to remove those horns. Hallelujah. Because in the removal of the, the horns that are exalted in the, in, 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 you know, the, of, of the kingdom of darkness, then the children of God, we, our horns can then be exalted. That is the prosperity that God wants to get. You know, sometimes, we think uh, things are not working and we look at, oh, they, because, they didn't, because they didn't, I was not promoted. Things are not working because in this region, everybody, there's no market, nothing sells. There are things that happen in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. They are horns that are exalted, that are preventing the horns of the children of God from being exalted. You cannot have two sets of horns. One must be exalted, one must come down. And the one that is exhausted by time per season is the one that prospers, is the one that has the strength, is the one that has the upper hand. So there are sometimes we need to go into prayers to cut off every horn that is exalting itself that is exalting itself in my life, in my home, in my family, in my finances, in my region, in my area. And in the cutting off of those horns, you now begin to declare and say, Lord, I declare that my head shall be exalted like the horn of the unicorn. And watch what will happen. Watch what will happen. Look at what happened in Israel. If we go into that after this season, look at what happened. When those carpenters, those blacksmiths came and they shaved it off, look at how God turned things down. Look at how the walls were rebuilt. Look at how the temple was rebuilt. Look at how business came into Israel and there was prosperity everywhere. But the purpose of this prosperity is for kingdom expansion. So it's okay to have a nice car. It's okay to have designer clothes. It is okay to have lovely houses and go on nice holidays. But what we must understand as a body is that the prosperity of God, first and foremost, is for expansion of kingdom. And that is the reason why by the grace of God, I constantly tell myself, you know, myself and Pastor Shola was out there and one of the Pizza Hut guys came. You know, obviously, Pastor with his lovely BMW out there, white BMW. And then the next car, you know, by the grace of God, was a, you know, a Land Rover Sport Discovery. And then the next car was Sister Sotonia's Mercedes Benz. And, you know, the guy just came outside. And he just said, how 
come you, you church guys, how come you just have so much nice cars in this place? Like, how come you've all got so, such nice cars? And he was like, and as, you know, Pastor La will know, this is someone that, you know, by the grace of God, you know, we're, we're trying to bring in by the grace of God and has already committed himself and he said he will come a few times and everything. We've prayed with him and, and all of that by the grace of God and we know that his time is, 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 is very, very soon. But this is what prosperity does. You like my car? Come, let me tell you how I got the car. It's not about showing off I got a better car than you. This is not the purpose of these things. And that's the reason why sometimes God withhold. It looks as if these things are withheld from us. It's not about my, my this is better than yours. Or my that is bigger than yours. Or I dress better than you. Those are nice. They really, really are. But it's all about expansion. It's all about expansion. Through prosperity, my cities shall spread forth. Yet, in spite of all of this, Israel, receive ye the word of the Lord. Through prosperity, I would expand you. I'm rounding up now. I will bring expansion to you. Through what? Prosperity. My cities. Remember that scripture? Hebrews 12, 22 to 24, 22 said, We have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. This is the city of God. We are all cities of God. You know, you can break it down. The, the, the church, the global church, is a city, is the city of God. And then us as churches, Rock Church, KICC, Foursquare, all the churches, you know, the denomination, the churches of God that honor Jesus Christ, they are also cities. And then your family, the Daniels, the Kings, the Okolos, we are all what? We are cities. So if God is saying that through prosperity, his cities shall spread forth, what he is saying is that every level, city level, every level, city level, uh, Psalm 46 verse 4, it says, there is a river, the streams thereof make glad the what? The cities of God. Now verse 5 says, verse 5 says, um, 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 in, now likened it to a lady, an individual. It says, um, um, where is it? God is in the midst of her. A city, her. What does that mean? So you can, you, even as an individual, you can be a city. Hallelujah. So when God said that, through prosperity, his city shall be spread forth. As long as you are prospering, God knows that the knowledge, the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God that brought about that prosperity will also spread. This is how we draw people in. This is how we attract people. Are you telling me right now, by the grace of God, if I became a multi-millionaire today, it is finished. It is finished. Let's rise up on our feet. In this midway, it is finished. By the grace of God, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. What? A believer that loves God like crazy, a multi-millionaire, I'm telling you, it is finished. It is finished. You know when, when Jesus said, it is finished? It is finished. Imagine you all, people that love God, that pursue after God with everything within you, and you now have the funds. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? Do you know the amount of ideas that we have in this place? Do you know how, do we know the amount of dreams? All I need to do, I would just drag a number of people, you know, resourceful people, deaconess come, uh, um, events coordinator come. What can we do? Money is no object. How, what, what, what is the idea here? <sighs> That's what we are talking about. Everybody here will know that something is happening here. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up a prayer to God. Let's just lift up a prayer to God. Let's just lift up a prayer to God. This is why the reward system of God is coming to us. This is why we must be rewarded in the month of July and beyond. Because this prosperity goes far beyond us. Come on now. Shakanda le poruta payandas. Kekerima runale fehila ra anos. Shabato ranake. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Father, we honor you. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, glorious God, for your prosperity in our lives that is meant for expansion. The expansion of your cities, the expansion of families, the expansion of the church. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. And I think it's a very good to pray one more. It's a very good place to pray one more prayer. Again, like I said, we'll, we'll go into the other stuff another time. But just one prayer. Can we have Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18? Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18. Now just follow after me, media. So verse 18 said, Then lifted I up my eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. Verse 19. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And you're telling me it was Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar doesn't have what it takes to scatter the children of God. But the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1, verse, from verse 2, it said, And Babylon encamped, uh, uh, encamped around Israel, and the Lord gave Israel unto the hand of King Nebuchadnezzar. But you really think it was King Nebuchadnezzar that was doing it? Look at what was happening. Verse 19 there. This is what inhibits the prosperity of the people of God because Satan doesn't want the knowledge of God to spread and he said unto the angel that talked with me what be these and he answered me these are the horns which have scattered Judah Israel and Jerusalem verse 20 and the Lord showed me what and the Lord showed me what ha you know carpenters they have all kinds of tools come on now verse 21 then said I, what come these to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these, next. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles. We lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Begin to declare. Begin to declare, begin to declare in this nation, in this medway, in your home, in your house. Begin to fray, begin to fray them, begin to pray. I fray every horn, lifting up his head, lifting up his head to scatter me, to scatter my finances, to scatter my ability to prosper, to scatter my business. In the name of Jesus, I begin to fray them by the power of God. By the investment of the Holy Ghost, we fray them, we fray them, we destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen.